Hey, let's get started. So yeah, today we are not coding at any means. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why, uh, but uh, we are going to talk about patch. Oh, I'm super bright, by the way. Sorry about the lighting. It's still weird, like usual. Uh, yeah, because like, I think it started from when I bought this new light. It's got really, really, really bright. So, like this is the lowest setting that they have. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so I've got to be like, you know, really like having a bright wash now but anyway so um yeah because uh story like long story short uh i have been looking like poking around uh django yesterday not like using django but looking at how django work and also because i'm looking into like rm and stuff like that and then like through all the rapper hole and stuff i came across like there's a pap uh 249 which about like how the um the back end of a um, database management or something like that, like how each, like, oh, the, the database back an API design or something like that. So, yeah, so there's lots of PEP, not just like PEP H. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard about PEP H before. So, what are these PEP? Like, what are these things that like people always talk about, people discuss about, people being really obsessed about? Like, what are these things? So, um, yeah, so let's look at what they are. So um, this is the python.org website. So this is basically the official website of Python. You can find documentation here. You can find like different versions of Python that you could download. Uh, yeah, so 3.9.1 now, uh, even though I'm still using 3.7 for some reason, uh, I think I slowly switched to 3.8 as my uh, developing version. Yeah, because like I would always love to use the most stable version possible. Um, yeah, I'm a bit like slow in that kind of sense. But anyway, um, so yeah, pap zero. So um, right. So basically, this is the first one. <laughs> it's like zero index. Yeah. So uh, what is pap? Pap is uh, is short for Python enhancement proposals. So these are basically uh, proposals of like what changes or like kind of suggestion of how anything Python basically. Uh, so yeah, so these proposals are like usually are proposed by someone and it will be like heavily discussed. Some of them will be implemented in the development of Python. So uh, yeah, so you can see that there are different stages. Um, so it could be, you know, um, yeah, like open ones that's under consideration. It could be like done or it could be accepted but not implemented yet. It could be like provisionally accepted or it could be um yeah it could be like deferred because like well not so sure or it could be rejected so uh yeah so there's a lot of things and then we would have a look at some of them of course we can go through all of them uh but yeah like you may ask like what's the point of knowing this well it well you can still use python all right without knowing them but uh if you want to be like a a, a Python guru, or like if you want to win the pub quiz at Python conferences, maybe it's good to have a look at these. Uh, the historical ones, I think the most important one will be the one that, you know, for example, pep age or anything that, you know, set up Python. Yeah, like things that you came across. But you can also have a look at the most recent one that like, uh, if you care about the development of Python, you can look at the one that's under consideration and things like that. So you could basically, if you have opinion, you could have a discussion with people i think so yeah the first one is like proposal and guidelines so basically is the framework of how you write the proposals i guess so yeah uh, you can see that some uh, pap actually is like um differ from like these paps so uh some of these like i call met meta pep so it's like so paps about pep so these are <laughs> the most fundamental ones uh so like any pep is like you know, basically is somehow kind of related to these ones. Um, so yeah, they're, they're like, of course, the first one is like how to write these PEPs and um, standard uh, PEP H, we'll have a look. This is the most, I think the most well-known one. Uh, it's the style guide for Python code. There's also style guide for, Py for C code, actually. It's like uh, PEP 7. So um, yeah, cause like in Python development, there's like a lot of code written in C. So that's also the style guide. Um, PEP5 is also important, uh, kind of a language evolution, um, also bug fixes, so this is also interesting. So these ones, I think this is the one that is like the most relevant. If you have time, definitely have a look at these. Uh, 
also pi PA governance. So this is like about the, um, uh, the you know, like uh, how all these like uh, Python, yeah, like we'll have a look, we'll have a look. Uh, it's like the Py, um, the Python, uh, you know, the, the associ like, is that association? Uh, like the, the Py PI index, like all these things, how, how are they like, you know, structured and things like that, I think. So yeah, you can see there's some some familiar names here. They are like you know the, the maintainer of the the warehouse project, of course, and um, yeah. So backward compatibility. So these are the important ones, like structure tests, templates, all this stuff. So let's have a look at maybe the first one first. Um, yeah. Okay. So here you can see that. Um, yeah. So this is like just very simple like it's just a document about how things work how pep work you know like python got a steering console in case you didn't know so these are like basically the council who is um uh, helping the development of python uh, so this is like how you know um yeah how like uh, all these like you know how Python is going. It's not like, you know, someone make a decision. It's like the council is helping to make decisions in um, how things work. So you know, all these pub would be, of course, reviewed by the council. And also, there's co-developers who would be like um, developing <laughs> Python, uh, VDFL, of course, uh, our well-beloved uh, VDFL. Uh, so this is actually the definition of that. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so our beloved VDFL Guido uh, is, of course, the, v the, the VDFL of Python. Um, uh, pub editors, uh, there's also pub editors here. So yeah, it could be like a rabbit hole. Again, like all these stuff, you don't have to have a look at all of them. It's just good to look through the most popular ones, the all these like meta ones, and then the ones that, you know, uh, that maybe your work is involved things like that. Um, so there's the standard workflow. So if you submit a proposal, so like how could you do that and things like that. So these are the things I won't go into the details because that's what we got to do. That's not what we got to do today. Um, review and resolution. So there are all these stuff. So um, yeah, so th this is, I think this is more useful, right? So this is like, um, you have a draft, you got a subject, then uh, it would go into a final and well it may be re replaced because like there's maybe like provisional drafts that like you know get merged and all this stuff uh it could be rejected like prof a, pro a provisional can also be rejected or withdraw um so yeah things sitting in the provisional basically is like sitting in the limbo it may not be like final immediately like accepted um, the fur is just like, okay, it will go back to draft. You have to make changes to it because uh, more things need to be cleared up or more, you know, research needs to be done. So, yeah. And also it could be replacing things, right? It could be, you know, for some of some pip, maybe, you know, someone decided that, okay, it's a bit like outdated. We have to update it so someone can propose a change. And then if the change has been accepted, then it will replace something. Um, yeah, what belongs in a successful pip? So yeah, these are all these things that uh, if you want to submit a pip, you have to go through all these things. Um, yeah. So all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I think like yeah, this is kind of a, a kind of a territory of its own. Like I mean, yeah, most user won't be able, like won't be interested in looking at this anyway. So okay, this is good. This is like how people work and then um we can look at so what we're going to look at pip age of course like this is the most um yeah or description of standard modules yeah even the standard module have some like pep there like yeah so this is uh by guido himself so this is a very important ones so yeah this is okay so this is basically like you may question about oh like why sometimes my linter complain who decide what the linter thing is good what is bad uh pep H, more or less um because yeah pep 20 i think is the center of python it says like it mentioned the readability and all this thing so yeah all the peps are like a lot of paps are actually interrelated. I remember someone put a graph of like how paps are related to each other and like which one mentioned which, and it's like very interesting. I think you can scrape all this content from 
uh, this kind of indexes and like you know you can draw that graph so indentation why we have four, four spaces instead of tab or any crazy things this is why <laughs> because it's written in path h it's basically like uh, because it's an accepted proposal so people basically agree on this style as the um the universal style guy of python um yeah so per, uh, tabs of spaces so yeah so python 2 kind of still accepts mixing but python 3 stop uh, allow mixing them so yeah always use for spaces um hmm. Uh, maximum length so uh, yeah you can't have like more than uh, 79 which is like kind of 80 characters or more <laughs> um, so uh, but this is more or less like a flexible thing I think some projects they kind of allow go to go to a hundred or something but I think if I think someone tried to scrape all the like the Python code on github before and seeing like the average Length, I think, is like something close to 80 <laughs> because that's the maximum. Um, so, yeah, like it's rarely above 80 for this reason. Uh, that's pretty interesting. If you wonder why, this is why. Um, yeah, so a line break, with, like uh, before, after binary operator, it's always after. I think you may have noticed it by now if you're writing a lot of Python that if you put a space here, then basically you would get an error. Um, yeah. If you put a space between, like, yeah, like this, oh, so, sorry, so this is wrong, so, like, yeah, if you do things like that, it will get a complaint or something. So, yeah, the, this this also stated the reason why, um, yeah, why this is good, why this is bad, and all this stuff, so, yeah, like, you can have a read of the argument. I think this will be really good if you're, like, me, kind of really bored at home and have nothing to do, then... This is a good thing to do. Um, yeah. So source file encoding as well. Um, import, like how you import stuff. Um, import should usually be on a separate line. Oh, really? Sometimes I put them together. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, sometimes I do this. So like if you import multiple things from a uh, from one uh, package so you import multiple components then you could do things like that but if you import multiple things you have to do it one by one so yeah lots of things that you'll be like why I can't do it that way basically pep H tell you why uh, because it's written there so this is basically the law so you have to follow it um, yeah so all these stuff and um, if you are designing a linter this is the Bible like this is where you follow so uh, you got lots of errors and all this like pep age error. What 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 are they like? You know that your linter is warning you about, and this is here. You can go through all of them. I think I won't uh, today. So you can basically, if you wonder, then go check it out. Um, voting guidelines also like some of them is basically not just about coding. Sometimes about how Python as an organization work as well. Um, yeah. I'm interested in the PyPA governance, so this is very new, uh, so, um, yeah, so this is active, so yeah, this is relatively new, this is like um, around a year old, so, um, yeah, Python Packaging Authority. So this is like, uh, what's the organization behind PyPI? So it's about all the pa packaging. So yeah, you can see that uh, what's going on here. And then there is like some kind of structure of PyPA. I think it's good to have it written uh, on paper in the PAP. So uh, this is more clear. So yeah, if you're interested in knowing how that works, you can also check this out. Um, so let's look at the other more interesting stuff. Sand of Python. Who doesn't know Sand of Python? Um, so yeah, Sand of Python is actually an Easter egg in Python that you could do. You can, uh, oh, I forgot how easy. Import this. Then you have the Sand of Python. So uh, this is the Sand of Python. Yeah, yeah, import this. So this is an Easter egg that is in uh, Python. If you go to Python and type import this, you would have this, uh, this how many? Uh, tw yeah, 20 uh, cent of Python. Um, only 90 of which have been written down. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is full of mystery. Like, 
like I, I love it like people are so are having fun doing this um so yeah there's like pep 20 so there's like a 20 uh you know sign of python but only 19 is here <laughs> so yeah so there's like uh i think someone tried to print some of these on a t-shirt or something beauty is better than ugly explicit is better than implicit simple is better than complex some people take this like really to the to the word like they really you know treat this as bible but i would say that um this is more like a philosophy so this is like a general guide of like what is better but uh, if you really want things to be more concrete, go to Pavage. Like those are more like solid style guides and stuff. Um, Doc string converge conversions. This is like important as well, I think. Yeah, I'm just looking for the yeah two four nine was the one that I discovered yesterday. So I'm just skimming all of these and like to see which one is uh, interested. So what are these I and F thing? I'm not sure. Sure. Um. Yeah, what does that mean? It doesn't say anything. I A I I F. Is it like accepted or something? Uh, S P. It may be like the category of it. Like you know, yeah, it could be the category of things. Accepted. So these are what accepted. These are professional. So yeah, you see that there are P and A there. I may be like something that is more like historical thing. Yeah, other information. Yeah, I think that's that's what it means. And then F and A, I don't know what does that mean. So A usually really mean accepted. F, I think it's final. So yeah, maybe that's what it means. So these are more other information. Um, some of them are older than the others, or some of them may not have the same weight of like you know coding as like you know this IF thing. So and yeah, so uh, I and also I think the digit means something as well. Like all these like two four means like. Um, something about API. So yeah, this is like API specification version two. This is what I was looking at yesterday. So dot string two five seven. You would also see this quite a lot, I think. Uh, at least I am. So because I I'm writing documentation and that's doc string and then there's all this like, yeah. So how doc string are structured? You know that like I think I've mentioned it before that we have two. Um, yeah, do X should be yeah. Um, replaced by useful description. So, um, yeah, so there are two styles that like a NumPy style and Google style that are popular, but, um, but those are not, uh, like those are like, you are not limited to those two. I think the only thing that limits you are, is like a uh, pep two, five, seven. So I think this is like Emacs conversion. So it's like, do not use that. Okay. No. <laughs> Um, and the link dot string indentation, so in the, even indentation is like really, you know, structured. So yeah, you use like dash n to indicate a new line and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is like very simple, perhaps two, five, seven, only like, you know, saying like how things should be indentated and some things are not allowed, but it doesn't say like whether you should use NumPy style or Google style or anything like that. It's just that most interpreter like Sphinx would understand those. So basically uh, you could, you know, do use other things as long as you follow PEP uh, 257, but um, why would you do that? <laughs> if like, if you can't really use the other tools to generate documentation, then it's not maybe not a good choice. So, um, yeah, 249 um, is about, yeah, how the API should work. They're like all these constructors, so this like connection methods and all this stuff. So close, commit, uh, rollback. Yeah, this, I have to read this in detail, so I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> um, right, what else, what else? Um, I reckon today we got to make it shorter because I... I forgot to tweet about this, basically. No, actually, I did remember to tweet about this streaming. I tweeted, and um, but I forgot to press tweet. So, like, I, I type it, and then I was sitting there for hours until, oh, like, and then I look at it again, and it's, like, half an hour before my streaming, so I stream it quite late. So I think that's why people are not here watching live. But So I will make this shorter, actually, So because... Like, all this pep stuff, I think not everyone is interested in it. It's just like I came across some relevant stuff yesterday. So I was like, oh, maybe I have never 
really mention PEP in detail, so it's good to patch this information. But um, yeah, but I think like I'll just keep it short. So for people who are not super interested, they won't be get thing like super bored. Yeah, also restructured text doc string. So this is also something related to doc string. You can see that they are kind of similar in numbers. So I think all these like at least the first digit may mean something. Um, yeah, so it is saying that using RST for doc string is it? So yeah. Yeah, XML text, yeah, approach. Yeah, this is like other tools, I think, that is used uh, historically, maybe. But yeah, basically, it is with uh, 257 create a structure of how like how we write DOS string today. Um, yeah, so there are more other things like server gateway. So like if you are really using Python professionally at work, then uh, some of these may come into like will be relevant but for most people who maybe just do it as a hobby or um, just doing it as a learning tool then this may not be very relevant um, yeah and also like these names are like you know uh, the, these are core developers or people in the steering council and you know this is our beloved VDFL of course yeah type hinting so i think this is kind of a relatively new thing it also release schedule is in pep as well so everything is very structured um yeah type hinting is not something very old i think it's a few years 2014 oh it's six seven years already oh really yeah maybe the idea has been hanging around for a while so but a few years ago it was like really something that is put into python as a standard library so yeah Right. Okay. So we'll, again, won't read it in detail. I'm just like quickly go through of them because there's a lot. There's a lot of these. Like like I said, even release schedule is here. So you see that these are like obviously newer ones because these are release schedules. Yeah, I think uh, is that okay? I'm just gonna quickly have a look because that may be the release manager. Yeah, it's Lucas, the uh, release manager of Python. So yeah, you can see the names here. Um, yeah, so if you want your name here, you have to become a core developer or someone like, you know, or if you propose a very awesome proposal, uh, why this, like most of these people are core developers because they're actively working on Python. I think it's not limited. If you are someone who, you know, really have a good idea and convince people to consider it, then you get a chance, you get a shot of like having a name here. Um, open source governance survey. So this is yeah it is 2008 it's funny like some date format is in like is in uk style european style some of this is in like us style <laughs> so can we have a path of like standardizing all these things on the website this is 2018 so i don't know like when they make the change but interesting so um oh microsoft is here for some reason key people and their functions so they are like yeah, I know that uh, Microsoft is heavily involved in the open source. So yeah, the Jupyter, Django. I think it's like a uh, a. Yeah, I think it's like um. Uh, so you see these names like some of them are, you know, Carol is uh, involved in Jupyter, um, Project Jupyter. Um. So yeah, I think it's like a kind of a joint thing, that is do by the, like that they put together as a pap. So this is Axif and yeah, choices. Oh, governing crisis. This is kind of like reading some historical documents in the library. <laughs> ah. Okay. So there's like some standard governance, um, uh, like how these projects should run after, you know, because like after Guido's kind of stepped down. So like, I think people can start thinking about how the open source project should be, um, should run itself by having like kind of like a system, kind of like a, um, 
uh, what do you call that? Like, uh, the uh, uh, like, uh, oh, I forgot the terms. Like, uh, co congregation? No, like a um, a constitution. Yeah, kind of like a constitution thing that like how things should work. So I think these are the project that uh, that join together to say that and share their um the knowledge of how things work. Um, yeah. Yep. So yeah, Rust's got all these stuff and things, so yeah. Cool stuff. Right. Okay, we have had a look in this. What else? It's interesting. Yeah, there's also steering council election. Yep. Steering council election. This is the newest one. This is what's happening in the coming year, like this year, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's two week nomination period, two weeks, so it just happened actually. So, yep, December, and then there are all these candidates and nominees and Yep, again, familiar names in here. Um, and then a um, vote and stuff. So, yep. A stats. It's like kind of like a documents, open documents that you could read. So, these are professional ones. Uh, yeah, they, they may change over time. So, type in still. This is the working progress for age four. Um, yeah, so you can see the typing things like has been there for a while, so it's still like under development. Um, storing project metadata in pyproject.com. Oh, I think I have heard something about this discussion before. Um, yeah, it's funny that like the at sign need to be at. <laughs> yeah, like I think yeah, Paul mentioned that. That's how I heard about this. Um, So yeah, this is like how, yeah, it's about like packaging and how to store the metadata and all this stuff. So yep, that's one thing. And yep, accepted, not implemented yet. So they will be implemented. So you want to know what will be in the future version of Python? Uh, you can basically have a look at this and have a have a glimpse of what will happen. So um, yeah. I was going photo core of C Python all this stuff and um, Yep. Yeah, so like uh yeah this this relates to what we had just looked at. Um Yeah, I think like some of these things are quick, some of these things are slow, so yeah, like is uh, so I think like some of these are quick to so if it's like for a straightforward thing if something that is more like debatable that would maybe like take ages for it to get accepted so yeah position only parameters ooh this is interesting what's going on here um yeah so let's have a look at the abstract introduce a new syntax ooh, ooh, something may coming up only parameters in Python. No external usable name when a function accepting processionally only an argument is called, as you know. Yeah, so now how things work is that, you know, when you have a function called and like if you don't have, you know, um, name equals to something, then it just go by the position of it, right? So it go by the order. Um, but now things may change, it seems. Um, yeah, so yeah, here's an example. So for example, you have X and Y, so, um, yeah, so you, you just go by the, uh, the position, you can't call it like X equals something, then, uh, yeah, then it will be, you know, it will be, I think as a keyword argument and it will be like an error there. And also this thing is weird and yeah, so you can read this. So there may be some changes in the new version of Python then. Um, yeah, with all this typing and stuff, maybe that's why like have matches the new development of how people use Python. Um, 
yeah, it will take quite a while to just read all of them now. So uh, I will skip it and leave it to you to read it if you're interested. Um, yeah. So there's so many things to consider, right? Because there are people using it in different ways. So it's kind of like more or less need to cover most situation for people to agree on things. Um, Yeah, some of them are more like internal stuff, you know, C Python things. So uh, not going to mess with them. So these are under consideration. So what are these? Oh, GitHub issues migration plan. I think I've heard from Marietta before that there yeah, are quite a lot of things going on here. Um, that yeah, the the code base of Python. I think there's plan to migrate it to GitHub and things like that. So yeah, All right. Okay, so what else? Um, one million limit? <laughs> What's that? Uh, a soft limit of one million. Python code? Why? <laughs> Hard limit of various expert. C5 on VM and other machine have limits. Okay. I don't think it's a good idea though. So, hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea because like this limit will change over time. So it's, it's not good to have a hard limit. And then if you have a limit, you have to review it all the time, is it? Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, there are all these, like it, like anybody can suggest something as long as you follow the guideline. But not all of these will be accepted. I can s like I can see so, or it will take a while until it got accepted. So, um, yeah, interesting with keyword arguments. So yeah, there's like a lot of debate of those things. Um, structure pattern matching tutorial. Hmm. So these are finished, so this is done. So this is like implemented. So yeah, you can see some of like, like the older stuff. Unicode integrations, yeah, you can use Python Unicode. Uh, weak references, yep. So this stuff, some of them are like quite kind of there already. Like you, you feel that you take it for granted. It's like, oh, that, that's Python thing, yeah. Like iterators, you know. Some of these are old, that's why. Um, yeah. So, so generators, yeah. So these like lots. This is like history of Python. <laughs> yeah, the with statement. Yeah, some of them are like really old. You'll be like, yeah, it's like it's almost there forever. Like in Python, I don't know when does it appear. But it appear in the first version of Python or something like. Yeah, so some of them are quite old. Um, yeah. And uh, yep. So not going to look of at all of these in details. Otherwise, like you basically look at all the development history of Python. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And, uh, historical matters. So yeah, this is uh, more matters. They are more like historical stuff. Um, adding new modules. Yeah, Python one point six releases. So yeah, so these are like more historical stuff. Oh my god, like, yeah, it's like history book of Python, like I said. Um, so no hosting support. Yeah, you can see how things are migrated. Um, yeah, using GitHub issues. And then... Yeah, voting procedures. Um, pending further research. So these are the ones sitting in the deferred, so... Other things need to be changed or something like you need to resubmit or something like that. So yeah, this, this is a big pile I can see. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. It's just that maybe it's not something that's needed at the moment or something like that. Um, so these are withdrawn or abandoned or rejected. So basically, this stuff are not going to be considered anymore. Um, you may find some interesting stuff in it, I think. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, integer volumes, 
So maybe it's, for example, this one, like people have different ideas, right? And you can check as well, like what people think. Yeah, this is very like C-like, right? And uh, in place of current, so <laughs> maybe I'm glad that it doesn't got accepted. Otherwise, we will write a follow-up like this instead of this. Um, yeah. Yeah, there are interesting stuff in here. Um, yeah. Oh my god, this is like such a long page. Like, where am I right now? Like, can I see, like, where am I scrolling? I think this goes on forever. Yeah, so I'm not going to scroll further. But uh, I mean, like, if you submit something, if even if it got rejected, your name it will still be here. Even though, like, yeah, it may be at the bottom, but anyway, um, this is cool stuff. And oh, actually, this is like only 2000, so this is not like first ever uh, Python, I think. It's kind of, yeah, when things start to get structured, I, th I guess. So, um, yeah, mm. let's wrap this up. So, yeah. This is what path means, and, and there are actually lots of paths. You can check it out in this page. Um, some of them may be relevant, some of them maybe not. Uh, some of them is just for fun. Some of them is, you know, things that you could actually contribute by discussing it, uh, or you can propose something if you have any strong opinion. But uh, yeah, uh, you can see like how big the Python community is. You can see like kind of like like vertically, like history wise, how things get to this point at this moment, or you can see it like also literally like length, like length and width wise that like how different aspects of Python has been discussed and um, has been, you know, um, the, the thought process and the discussion and how things are proved and things like that. So yeah, it's fascinating. And uh, if you have time, a uh, lot of time at home, uh, there's something that you could do. <laughs> uh, and that's it for me for this week. Uh, I know it's a bit short. Uh, I forgot to advertise it. And um, so, yeah, I'll just keep it short for now. I may go to the grocery short, shop to buy something. And then, um, yeah, and that's it for this week. I don't know what I've got to do next week yet i am still looking at my uh, orm thing for django for now uh, if i discover something interesting i may share it with you but that's it for now and i will see you next week bye